In this video, we're going to be looking at the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so we use Pythagoras theorem on right angle triangles. And the Pythagoras theorem is looking at the sides of the right angle triangle. So here I've labeled the sides of this triangle. And now we're ready to see that famous Pythagoras theorem. So here it is, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And all these three letters are referring to the sides you can see in the triangle. Now a and b does not matter which way around it is, but the c is very important. The c has to be the longer side. And with right angle triangles, the longer side is always going to be opposite the right angle. So let's have a look at those points again. So it only works on triangles and it must be a right angle triangle. So you're always looking for that right angle. And when you see a squared angle like this, it means it's a right angle, a 90 degrees angle. We use a square as a shorthand to say 90 degrees. To be able to use the Pythagoras theorem, you must be given two sides known. And once you're given two sides known, you can always work out the third unknown side. So like I mentioned before, the longer side must be C. The A and B would not matter which way around, but C must be the longer side, the one opposite the right angle. Now, when we're using the Pythagoras theorem, we're going to be doing some solving. So if you haven't done the video on solving equations, you must go and do that first. Otherwise, the solving stage of the Pythagoras theorem might confuse you. Okay, so we've got ourselves a triangle here. Now, has it got a right angle? Yes, you can see that squared angle is representing a right angle. Is it a triangle? Yes, of course it's a triangle. And do we have two sides known? Yes, we do. We have three and four. So we can work out the unknown side x. So let's start by writing out the Pythagoras formula. So A and B could be the three or the four, either way around. You could say A is three and B is four, or you could do it the other way around and say A is four and B is three. It really would not matter. What does matter is the longer side becomes C. So the X will have to be C in this case. Now it's always good to go and label the sides so the exam can see what you're doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in the formula. So we've got three squared plus four squared equals x squared. Now three squared you should know is nine, three times three is nine, and four squared is 16, four times four is 16. And of course, we can simplify the left-hand side by adding them up. Nine plus 16 should give us 25. So now we have 25 equals x squared. In each case, of course, we didn't do anything to the x squared. There was nothing we could do up till now. So right now we've got 25 equals x squared. Now, how do you get rid of that square sign on the x? Because remember, we're trying to work out x. We don't want x squared. So how do we get rid of that square? We do the opposite operation, which is square root. So you want to square root both sides. Remember with equations, you have to do the same to both sides. So you'll square root the 25 and you'll square root the x squared. The x squared should become x and you should know the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is five. And now we've got x equals five. So we finished this question. So let's look at another question. I'll give you a moment to decide if we can use the Pythagoras theorem here. And you should have said yes. So let's go ahead and do the Pythagoras theorem. So here we've got the Pythagoras theorem. Again, you can label the sides. Now the five and the 12 is going to be A and B, and it doesn't matter which around you do it. However, the longer side, which is X here, must be C. So I've put A is 12 and B is five. Okay, so here we've filled in the formula, and we have 12 squared plus five squared equals X squared. The C has been replaced with X, the longer side. And that's a really big must. So 12 squared is 144 and 5 squared is 25. And of course we can add them up. 
use your calculator if you like. And we have 169 equals x squared. Now again, we want x. So how do we get rid of that square sign? We square root and we must do it to both sides. So we must square root the 169 and the x squared. Square root and the x squared gives us x, which we're looking for. And square root of 169 gives us 13. Brilliant, we've got it. X is equal to 13. Okay, so let's try this question. Now I'm hoping a lot of you said we can't do it straight away because there's no right angle in this triangle. So we can't use Pythagoras theorem on this one. Let's go to the next one. And again, we can't use Pythagoras on this one. The reason being is there's no right angle and it's not even a triangle. It's got four sides. How about this one? It is a triangle. It has got a right angle. So it looks like we can use the Pythagoras theorem, but no, we can't because we haven't got two known sides. There's only one known side. You haven't got enough information to use the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, that's better. We've got two sides known now. So we can use the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so let's start by labeling. The seven and X are A and B, and it could be either way around. However, the longer side, the side opposite the right angle, must be C, and that's that 25. Okay, so let's go and fill in the formula. Now, this question's a little bit trickier because x squared is not on its own on one side. So you must pay attention to what we're going to do next. It's really important. And if you watch the video on solving equations, you shouldn't really have a problem. Okay, so if we're trying to work out what x is, we need x to be on its own on one side. And it's not on its own here. It's got seven squared next to it. So we must get rid of that seven squared. If you like, you can work out what seven squared is first, or you can just leave it as seven squared. I'm going to just leave it as seven squared. Okay, so I want to get rid of seven squared. And the way I'm going to do that is I'll subtract it off. So I'm going to subtract it from the left-hand side and I'll subtract it from the right-hand side. Because remember with solving equations, we must do the same to both sides. Brilliant, it's gone from the left-hand side because I subtracted it. And you can see I'm subtracting it on the right-hand side as well. So the right-hand side has become 25 squared minus that seven squared. Now this bit you can put into your calculator or if you really love mental arithmetic, just go ahead and do it in your head. So now we've got X squared equals five, seven, six. And the final step, which you're probably used to by now, you're going to square root both sides. So square root in the x squared gives us x, which we're looking for, and square root in 576 gives us 24. So we have x equals 24. Now in the question, I didn't have any units, but be very careful units. If there's units, you must put it in your answer. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.